So whereas the first two examples looked at expanding things completely and we use Pascal's triangle, this third example says to find a specific term. And any time that we're asked to find a specific term, we can use the formula that's on our formula sheet. to figure that out. In this case, we want to find the ninth term. So term 9 is going to equal what? And the thing about this formula is you just need to know where the numbers come from. Where do we find n? k plus 1 is 9, so that'll tell us that k has to be 8. But where do we find the n from? Because k is always 1 less than the exponent. Close. The 10 will be the exponent, which is always 1 less than the row number. In fact, when using this formula, you won't have to worry about the row number. You'll just have to remember that n is always that exponent. So in this case, it's going to be 10. a is always our first term. And I like to put everything in brackets, even if you just have a single term like this one. It'll be x, n minus k will be 10 minus 8 up top. b will be negative 2. So anytime there's a subtraction in your binomial, that negative goes with your second term. And k is 8. So step one is just gathering stuff and putting it into the formula and making sure you know what values come from what. n comes from the exponent. k is always 1 less than the term number because it's term k plus 1. a is your first term in the binomial, and b is your second term in the binomial. If you have a negative in there, that goes with the b value. Then we'll figure out each of these three things simplified on their own, and then simplify them all together. Mental math, what's 10 choose 8? First of all, we should know our formula. This is one I want you to know off by heart, because it's not hard to memorize. It's going to be 10 factorial in the top, 8 factorial, and 2 factorial in the bottom. If you were expanding it, the 8 factorials would cancel out, right? And you'd have 10 times 9 on the top, still divided by 2, which would be 45. Second set of brackets. If we simplified this, it'll just be x squared. And the third set of brackets negative 2 to the power of 8. And this is where it's important that we make sure that the value is inside the brackets. A negative to the power of 8, will it be negative or positive? Positive. 2 to the power of 8, do you remember that from your powers chart? 256. And now if we multiply 45 times 256 with our calculator, We get 11,520 x squared. So we multiply our coefficients together and our variables together if we have more than one variable and get our final answer. So try some of these. Start with 11D.